Quinnipiac and Central Connecticut are separated by just 25 miles. Last year in two meetings, they were separated by just four points. Both games coming down to the final possession. Are we in for more dramatics here today? We sure hope so. It's the game of the week. It's rivalry week. It's Central Connecticut and Quinnipiac, and it's yours next here on NortheastConference.tv. She learned from Justina Udenzi uh, as, as her understudy last year as we have a basket along the baseline, count it, and the foul. Here's Jasmine Martin from the corner. Count the basket and the foul. Found it around the perimeter, right to left. They go inside, find Domin who gets it in off the window. He gets to Barron. Barron, right corner, three, and it's good. An 0 for 5 start from the field. She gets her first bucket. Nice job by McQueen working her way around the defender and taking it right to the hoop. It was a third team foul for Quinnipiac. Babe unleashes from deep, and she connects for three. Game against Robert Morris. She's backing her way in on Chandler. Throws up an off-balance shot that just squirts its way through the cylinder. Time with the Bobcats in front, 31-28. to Right now, let's send it over to our own Phyllis Mangina on the baseline with Bobcats head coach Trisha Fabric. I'm joined with uh, Coach Trish Fabric. Coach, up until the third seven-minute mark, he had an 11-point lead on Central. What are you going to have to do to, to really take this game back over? Well, I think we're doing exactly what we want to do defensively and getting into offense. I, I like to see us get a, get a couple more calls down low. I think we're really going inside, and we're it's a real physical game. And from from that standpoint, it's hurting us a little bit, um, not getting those calls down low because we're going in and we're going in and we're going in. But defensively, we're all right there, 31 points, holding them to 28. We're doing a great job defense. They're slow. I feel like there's a lot of stoppages in the game, some free throws. It's a slower-paced game. Um, so we want to get out and just keep transitioning, get the ball in feet hand, keep going inside out, just keep chipping away and do what we do on offense and defense, and I, I like what we're doing. They had a nice little run, some good little buckets to the uh, to the rim, but it's a good game so far. You've gotten the ball into the post, but your post players are getting pushed up the lane. Yeah, you know, I just, uh, you know, that's something we're going to go back and take a look at. I just like, the, I think that we're there, it's a real physical game, and I think they got to look at, you know, displacing our kids when they're getting positioned and pushing them off that spot a little bit. Thanks so much. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, Phil. Joined now by uh, Coach Beryl Piper. And, Coach, 6.30 left in the first half. You're down 11. Talk about the run that led you into halftime. Well, the big thing was we didn't give up transition baskets the last eight minutes of the game, and, you know, they run, and we can't give them transition baskets. So we have to be able, number one, to score because, there's you know, they're running on in whether we score or whether it's off the turnovers, and we got to take care of the basketball. That's going to be key. And then, you know, just execute our game plan and stick with what we're supposed to do because it's working. You know, we just one basket at a time right now. I thought you did a fantastic job against their post play. You're pushing them up the lane and making it difficult for their post to score. Right. I think it's really important not to let them catch it on the low block, something we worked on the last couple of days, and I think our kids are doing a great job. A fantastic first half, and good luck in the second half. Now it's three on three as Babe leads the charge, trying to take it herself, and she knocks it in off the square. This good child along the left baseline, and she got it to drop. That's about her. She's been so consistent all year long. And here comes Barron with a great steal. Another pickpocket right there. It's three on one. Nice feed on the right side, and Gustella puts it in. The guard spin move from eight feet away and got the friendly bounce off the front of the iron. Passes back. Arbogast driving in. Count the basket and the foul. Abshire pass to Dunbar. Dunbar on the drive, coming in. It goes off the side of the backboard, but it bounces the way of Goodchild, and she knocks it in from the left side. Corner, Goodchild, quick pass inside, and McQueen back to the right. Martin from deep as the shot clock expires. Ten on the shot clock now. Martin with the handle. Inside, getting it to Abshire. Abshire driving right baseline, passing back. Open look for Martin. Back iron. Arbogast with the rebound. Up ahead to Babe, 15 seconds, Blue Devils down three, Babe in traffic, had it blocked, she gets it back, clock at 10, and timeout Central Connecticut. Davis. If you can get her the ball, you're going to take a three right here. Davis pulls the trigger, gets to Babe, Babe for three, top of the key, no. Second chance, she's through the outlet into the left corner, and it goes out of bounds into the bench. Aaron makes this, she'll have a 20 point game, and she does. 64-59, final 2.7. Blue Devils bring it across the floor. Three at the buzzer is short, and the ball game is over. Right now, let's send it over to the sidelines where Phyllis Mangina is standing by with the victorious head coach for the Bobcats, Trisha Fabry. I'm joined now by our winning coach, Trish Fabry. And, Coach, we talked before this game about how important this was 
a tough loss at FDU. You wanted to see how this team would react coming here to Central. I just thought our girls just battled for 40 minutes. It's conference play. Our two previous meetings with Central last year goes down to the last possession. This is no exception. It had to be a fun one to watch, but I really think us changing our defense into the a 1-3-1, one, one, really, they were really having a field day with us, putting the ball down with their dribble drive, and our girls really fought and came up with enough stops and just changing that defense was able to give us the cushion to go ahead defensively and put the ball into our best players' hands to win it. Yeah, I thought that was a fabulous adjustment by your part, and, and again, you really made that the central team have to shoot jump shots, but Carly, good child, some really, really good, you know, smart plays, quick hands in the backcourt, scored some good points for you. Carrie Goodchild has just been consistently one of our best players, and that's what you need seniors for. She's so experienced. She's been in these tight games, and she is just, again, senior leadership, knows what to do, when to do it, but she did a heck of a job on, on uh, Jacqueline Babe tonight. And uh, Jack, Jacqueline Babe did not get a good look at that last shot, and that was Carrie Goodchild. Yeah, I thought your defense at the end was just fabulous. Now, how often do you, have you switch into that 1-3-1 one, one often, or is that something you just put in? We, we've been working on it for a month now, and we knew we were going to need it. And uh, we knew that going in, seeing Central, what they want to do with their dribble drive and their ball screens, they're really tough to defend. So I just think that we needed to have a backup plan, and the kids really executed it and just got Central out of their rhythm with really going hard to the basket. Well, congratulations on a terrific win and a great bounce-back game. Hey, thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. And we have our player of the game coming in now, Felicia Barron. Felicia, congratulations. A fantastic game. And, it was, you know, Coach called this a bounce-back game after FDU. How did the players view this game? Um, we just wanted to come out hard because we knew we lost FDU. And we just wanted to um, get this win because that was a tough loss we had. So we had to pick up our defense and just work hard in practice. And that made us get this victory tonight. Now, what about the change? You normally play in, uh, player to player. You change to 1-3-1. One, really effective for your team. Yes, we've been practicing, practicing that all week um, just to keep our hands up and get in the gaps because we know they're a good shooting team, so we just wanted to stop them as best we could, and the one through one worked very well. Now, you moved from point guard to the two-guard spot this year, and you've really exploded, and one of the best players in the league right now. Has that really helped your game? Yes, it helped me a lot. I'm, be, I'm able to get more shots off, and I'm not worried about setting up the plays and trying to score also, so it's like a good um, experience for me, and I enjoy playing it too this year. Talk about some of your young freshmen that are here with your playing on this team. What have they done for your program? Um, Jasmine Martin, Shana Earl, and the rest, all four of them, six of them, they just are a great impact. They um, play strong. It doesn't matter what team they are. They come out and score um, the best way they can, and I'm glad like, they're on our team to help us win. Well, congratulations on a great win, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Well, back to you, Craig. All right, thanks, Phyllis. Final score here in New Britain. The Bobcats win the front end of this Connecticut Collision Rivalry Week series over Central Connecticut 64-59.